Hi there, welcome to another episode of What the Word, where we're seeking just to encourage people to live out God's Word in their day-to-day life, to read it and to put it into practice. That's what the Word of God is is, is for. Um, and we're in John chapter 6 at the moment, so um, we're going to be reading from John 6 uh, verse 34, no sorry, verse 14. Um, so it's a fairly big section of scripture, so just encourage you open the description box below this video, read along there, or open your Bible and read along. Just really encourage you to read the word with us. I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as I can. So it says, uh, John, uh, Mark 6 verse 14, King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested and he had had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his, brother's he- bro- on his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When, his daughter- when the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and-, and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, ask me anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. So it says that Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. So so Herod recognises something in John. There's something about John that he recognises. Perhaps he's a godly man. He's a holy man. He's a righteous man. And it says that... um, he liked to listen to him. So Herod would go and listen to John. He would listen to what John had to say. He would listen. He, he, he was interested. He liked hearing what John had to say. He recognised there was something about this man, righteous, holy, godly. And so he was interested. He was puzzled, but he was interested. He liked hearing what he had to say. But what I find really intriguing is there doesn't appear to be any impact on his life. He didn't adhere to what John was saying. He didn't follow through on what John was actually calling out in his life. Yeah, he was supposed to, he had his brother's wife and that was not right. He needed to put, he needed to let, sort that out. And um, I think there's a real danger for us today in Western Christianity and the way we've built church to be this kind of attractional model where Often we have big performances and bands and stages and lights and smoke and, and, a, and, a, and a clever word from the preacher um, that people come because, well, they're drawn to this, almost like this show. And it's, it's very nice to go to. It's very interesting to listen to. It's very good to be a part of it. But does it ever actually bring transformation in our lives? And that's the danger, isn't it, that we can easily fall into, that we can recognise there is something about this and I'm really interested in in terms of what the the, the guy's saying or what's happening at church and I like to hear it but does it ever impact me? Does it ever bring about repentance and change? And perhaps you're in that situation today and I just want to challenge you. Is there something in your life that actually you know is wrong, you know has been challenged, you know actually I've heard this many times, I need to put this right but actually you haven't taken action yet. Don't be like Herod who recognised 
this guy's righteous. This guy is saying the right stuff. He's, he's a godly man. And I like hearing, I like to listen, but I won't ever put into action what he said. Don't be like Herod. I want to urge you, put it right. Sort it out. Get help. Speak to someone about it. You know, it's so important that we don't just read the word and listen to the word, but we live it out. We put it into action in our lives. So what we also find is, is suddenly that there is this opportunity, this opportune moment for Herodias, isn't there, who bears this grudge against John. Herod has this party and Herodias' daughter comes and dances and pleases Herod and his guests to the point where in a flurry of kind of stupidity, maybe, he, he promises her the world. He says, look, I'll give you whatever you want, up to half my kingdom. That's a pretty huge promise, right? A pretty foolish promise to make, foolish oath to make. And so she goes out and asks her mum, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist. And so suddenly Herod is faced with this choice. He's in this party mode. All his guests are watching. Everyone's looking. What's she going to ask for? And is Herod going to give it to, to her? Because he's made this oath. I'll promise you whatever you want. And suddenly she comes out. I want John the Baptist's head. And it says, because of his oath, he was greatly distressed because of this oath, this foolish promise he had made and his dinner guests. He did not want to refuse her. And so he has this choice to make, doesn't he, in the moment. Does he save face and just say, OK, I'll give you what you want. I promised it and I'll give you what. Does he save face or will he save John? And he chooses in the moment to save face because of his dinner guests, because of everyone watching. He's in this high position. The Herod the king, Herod the one who's promised this girl anything. And he chooses not to go back and, and, and kind of perhaps lose some respect, lose some power, lose some influence, uh, gain a bit of shame. You know, instead he chooses to save face instead of saving John, this man that he knows is righteous and holy. And it's such a sad choice. But I want to point you to a better choice, the one who made a better choice, and that's Jesus. <laughs> because Jesus is not like Herod, thankfully. And he had a moment, didn't he, where he could either save face or save us. And as people were passing Jesus on the cross as he was nailed there for our sins, they said, look at this guy. He can save others, but he can't save himself. And do you know what? Jesus could. He could save himself. In a moment, he could have come down from that cross and shown himself and proved himself. And yet he chose a different path. He chose instead to save us. And I don't know about you, but that is remarkable. I'm so thankful. And I think Jesus is so awesome that he chose to save us instead of save himself in that moment. And I just want to put that challenge to all of us. Following Jesus, we will have these moments where we get a choice to save face or to stand up for Jesus to save ourselves or to honour our king. And that means laying ourselves down, doesn't it? And it might be when people are watching. It might be when in a situation that's difficult and pressured. Um, and, and I just want to encourage us, let's not be afraid to be people who lose face for the sake of Christ, because that's what he did for us. So I just encourage you, you know, look at this passage again. There's so much in there. Um, and, and turn it into prayer. Ask for the Holy Spirit's help for you to go and to live this out in your life and have a great week. We'll see you again soon.